Ooh, spooky October, everybody. We're in October. Happy fall for all my fall loving football fans. I'm doing this just as uh, Sunday football games are about to get started on October 3rd. This is your Sunday submission for MMAnews.com. My name is Ed Carbajal. You can follow me on Twitter at Carbazel. And if you like what we're doing here at MMAnews.com, make sure you uh, do the thumbs up, bell notification, subscribe to the channel where we have stuff like this and interviews from the Canadian god, James Lynch. This week we have, right after UFC 266, it was a great grab by James Lynch, Valentina Shevchenko, who talks about her win at UFC 266, Pat Militic interview, and we all, he also got to speak with Austin Vanderford after his quick little AEW uh, jumping Chris Jericho at uh, Rampage when they're out here in Queens. So make sure you check that stuff out over on the... Uh, youtube channel where this vlog and stuff and those interviews live um so let's get into it before we even get into the mma stuff from the weekend because we're going to go over bellator 267 uh from friday that was their first show in the uk and we're going to get into obviously last night's ufc vegas card because you know that's mma news loves them some ufc <clears throat> we're going to talk about um some boxing news. I mean, we've mentioned Triller a few a few times on this, and um, especially when that uh, the last event that was, uh, you know, the Holyfield, um, Belfort. I mean, talking about somebody that's spending a lot of money on, um, I don't know what. I mean, they they had a lot of money, but if they had it, they didn't. They're not making it back, and um, it looks like. So today's October third. For whatever reason, they booked uh, Teofoma Lopez versus George Cambosos at uh, at the Hulu Theater in Madison Square Garden. It was supposed to be tomorrow, Monday of all days. Who the hell watches anything but football on Monday, right? Not a good move. So then they were going to move it out to October 16th uh, at Barclays, <clears throat> which, not for nothing, if you book something at the Garden and you have to cancel it, I'm pretty sure that's a hefty fee to pay. Never mind. They've already moved... Their last event, their last big event, pay-per-view from West Coast to East Coast with the Holyfield Belfort thing. So it looks like they're I don't know who's handling the booking and stuff there, but um the this fight is off if you haven't seen that news yet. Um I first saw I know Dan Raphael's been really reporting on it and tweeting it a lot. Uh, but Kevin Iol, who uh, does uh, a lot of UFC and boxing news, I'm gonna share this with you. I'm gonna add this up here. He he put published this last night as as we were all watching uh, UFC Vegas, um, thirty eight. Uh, Thorsten Mears, who's the tri Triller COO, um, he had a, a couple of good quotes from him that it kind of explained what was happening with this whole thing, and uh, now they're just looking to to wash their hands of this whole uh, Lopez Cambosos thing. I think they're still trying to work with Lopez, but Cambosos. First of all, uh, after reading this. I mean, a lot of that they spend. It's funny because you're probably going to see an ad for that when you watch this video, um, because um, I saw ads on. I've been seeing ads on Facebook. Excuse me, ads on YouTube, and it's not even something that's happening anymore. But in this article, uh, he mentions advertising we've lined up, performance marketing, and they spent nine and ten million dollars in promotional. This is from the Yahoo article right here. I'll probably drop this in the link stuff for if you guys want to read that the whole thing so you can get the de details on this. But um, Boxing Seeing has more details that aren't on this, so you can check that out too. But, uh, you know, Kevin Ioli wrote this great piece, kind of piecing together everything, how how they messed this up, this whole thing up. Because if you remember when they were bidding for this, like all the other promoters were bidding for this, it was they made news when Triller won the bid because they bid the most. I think it was like $6 million that they put in for it. So... Um, but there's funny things happening with this whole thing. Here's a, here's a, the note about the bid on, um, and, the as he, he, he puts the pieces together, but I'm trying to find the quote where he says, um, Combosos. Yeah, here we go. So this is what was happening with October 4th at present. Combosos can fly to New York, but there are no available return flights to Sydney until November 2021. So he'd have to sit here for a little while. 
which is not for nothing. If you saw Arlene Blanco, who fought in Bellator this past summer, um, she's still stuck here because she, they're, they're not letting people come back because of their COVID protocols. So that's part of why this fight is not happening and why they, they can't get uh, – I mean, I don't blame – listen, look at, the, look at what happened with uh, um, last weekend's UFC card. Uh, was it Dan Hooker and 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 um, I can't I never could uh, the guy that looks like Kelvin Gaston Hasbro I'm not gonna butcher his name but you know like those guys had such a hard time getting here while dealing with stuff in their personal lives and then you saw the the uh, the news from um, City Kickboxing um, those guys are just talking about like the one that whoever's here is just gonna start living here and they want to move their whole gym and every all the fighters here because of uh, the the COVID protocols over there. So that's part of this. But the other thing where he talks about a lot of shenanigans, I mean, he also mentions how the, did I just pass it? Yeah. Or so the CEO takes full responsibility for, for picking this October 4th date. He says, put that on me because for some reason he thought that would be a great day for the venue and for pay-per-view because nothing else was happening. It's, it's Monday and it's football season. And I don't know about you, but Monday Night Football has been a thing for, for a long time. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. Um, and I, and I think they say here it's the Raiders Chargers game. I think it's on on this piece. But um, even me, who's not even like a real football fan, you know what I like about football season? The specials at the pub that I can go to. The half price nachos. I'm not supposed to be eating nachos, so I get them without cheese. But anyway. <laughs> um, they're not really nachos then are they but but um yeah so that's happening and then um they're trying to write that that's that's happening to them not to mention that the cost of moving the the last event so i don't know what they're going to do it's it looks like they're going to try to stay in this in the business of um these uh freak show fights um circus fights whatever you want to call them or they, I'm sorry, they want to remove themselves from that. That's what the article says. But they started their business with that, and they want to remove themselves from that by putting legitimate boxing stuff on. So it looks like they're still going to do something on October 16th in the Barclays Center with the boxers from the undercard. The bout order is not confirmed. It's probably confirmed by Monday or Tuesday. Again, uh, Dan Raphael and, and Kevin Ioli um, and Boxing Scene have, have a lot more details on it as they emerge. But this was all happening, coming out in the news yesterday as, as UFC Vegas 38 was going on. So make what you will of that. But, I mean, everyone, anyone that had any doubts about Triller or whatever, I mean, and I hate to say it because, I, you know, Triller bought Fight TV. The folks at Fight TV are fantastic. I like Fight TV. So if Triller fails, I don't want to see Fight TV fail because not only do they, uh, I mean, it's not just the combat sports, boxing, and MMA. There's grappling events on there, kickboxing, pro wrestling stuff on there. If you're an indie pro wrestling guy, like Game Changer Wrestling and AEW, I'm, I mentioned Austin Vanderford, they do stuff with AEW for the international market. So um, I just hope that uh, whatever whatever Triller is going to, if they can't survive all these poor choices, I'm just hoping they don't take fight tv down with them because i like the platform a lot um so that's that um let's get into the mma news so we'll go on to uh from friday to saturday um a lot of early mma this weekend i actually caught the cffc 101 which was just an hour north of me uh here in the east coast um really quick before i get into that there's a flyweight there their flyweight champion um, he's only four and zero, oh, but he you know he fought for the title. He's got it. I think, it, and his opponent was uh, short notice, but he's a Sara Longo uh, team member, Fumi Nakuda. I'm 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 ho- hoping I'm not mispronouncing his last name. N K U T A. Keep that name in your mind because you're going to see him on Contender Series soon or whatever. I forget what the protocol is. I think you need at least five um, fights before they put you in their Rolodex to get you on Contender Series or have you as a backup fighter but uh the 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 kid is the kid is good in the, good in the cage good on the mic and they had him do commentary at yesterday it was an early uh afternoon card and they had him do commentary with CM Punk and John Morgan and he did a really good job even CM Punk was like you're trying to take my job um but um he's super respectful too but he's uh he's definitely what the UFC likes as far as personality 
and the skill and everything that measures up to you know to be on par with fighting and you're you marketing yourself i mean the kids got all everything that it takes so keep that name in your mind if you don't have a ufc fight pass again i'm not an affiliate or anything of them i just fight pass has been ufc fight pass has been uh probably my most watched combat sports platform i know somebody was asking me a couple of weeks ago like why don't i do espn plus um because everything winds up on fight pass eventually that was my answer i wrote in the comments it was like from two weeks ago the sunday submission from two weeks ago but that's my everything eventually winds up on fight pass because that's the ufc's library including like old pride fighting championship stuff um you know so that's just my little plug for i mean you know free advertising for ufc fight pass uh if you want to know where all these stars and stuff come from a lot of the regional events that they pull them from lfa cffc um and victor used to be on there but um you know other promotions they've got other promotions on there boxing and kickboxing and stuff like that so um if you want to kind of deepen your knowledge of uh where these where these fighters come from that's definitely one that should be on your your radar as far as where to watch fights so that way you can't complain there's no fights when there's no ufc on a saturday all right bellator 267 let's add that on here because we got a couple of highlight gifs gifs uh let me add that here i know i'm not doing this fast enough for luke lopez who watches these sunday submissions shout out to luke lopez and his criticisms longtime listener follower watcher of this uh since we started doing the sunday submission here he uh what would you say to me luke you could drop it in the comments and drop, put more details on that by the way uh you said i don't know about nick diaz i've been watching nick diaz fight since he was eight, 18 years old you talking about but uh, i'm sure you i'm sure it's because of something i said when i was trying to be uh nice about uh where his career seems to have wound up but anyway beltor 267 prelims were fantastic um again my name is on this but i don't write the results this originally is a uh the fight card listing and someone else likes to just doctor it up and not put new content up they just like to remix this old stuff but we'll use these uh these gifs, gifs, however you say it. Anybody want to put the pronunciation in the comments? By all means, help me out. I um, just want to make sure I don't play anything that's video, so I don't get hit with the YouTube uh, police. Um, play some of these highlights because the biggest talk of this event, because it was the uh, MVP Lima rematch, was that uh, a lot of folks, including myself, feel that Lima got robbed. That's that's MVP's entrance. It's pretty dope, actually. Um, so I'm trying to find out. Is this the first round? Yeah. So I understand what a split decision, right? Excuse me. The um the knockdowns that happened from MVP, I think that's enough to sway a judge, you know. But uh, let's take a look at this one. So this was one of the ones that that happened early, and uh, it's a lot of you know. MVP does a lot of trickery and all that stuff with his showmanship. It's very hard to read, especially when you know that's all to bait. All that movement is to bait you in to walk into something you're not expecting, right? And there's something to be said for a relaxed fighter. A relaxed fighter that pops moves out like that, super dangerous. He's a MVP stance. If you if you look if you watch it, it's very similar to Wonder Boy. It's not like Leota Machida. It was a Shotokan base. I know. Um, in one of the lead ups, um, um, MVP was saying. That it's more of a taekwondo base which you can see in that stance and and i think wonder boy's uh karate style base is the same which is why they use a similar stance and which is why it's very deceptive to guys that are fighting so especially when you come in and they can be you know hit you with one shot while you're in motion you know it could make you lose balance it might not even be a legit knockdown like painful even though we know uh mvp has cracked craniums but um part of that is the uh you know the force meeting force and him just moving out of the way that kinetic energy that he he's able to create with his style um but here's a that knockdown happened but then this takedown happened this one here and that's a lot of what the fight was not for nothing was uh him working from from that takedown there was a point i think it was in round and, the, and it might have been in this round I just saw a freaking lantern fly fly past my window. So those those motherfuckers, I swear to God, I'd kill them all. We're supposed to, and they're bad. But anyway, <laughs> um, 
the uh there was a point in round two that um he, Lima pulls guard and and he's he must have some crazy grip strength because he was controlling uh Lima's wrists. MVP pulls guard and he was controlling Lima's wrists, and Lima seemed to have a hard hard time getting his hands free, even when they were sweating. So that's just grip strength because uh he couldn't get he was able to get free eventually and land some some blows from the top but um there was a point where he's holding his wrist and doing closed guard and and, and pulled him in close and he looked to the referee to be like standing because uh, that's obviously where mvp does better he's not known as a grappler he does have a submission when he caught a, a really slick ankle lock off of somebody i don't remember who but um that was one of the things that were kind of like uh i'm not going to stand you up you know you you get up and um so that's that was a round that was questionable, but most of the round was like most of the fight was like that. So this is just his footwork that I was talking about. He actually, um, unfortunately, we I think we do have it. This is a video that I can't play because of you know why reasons. Watch four Sunday submissions to go to know if you don't know why, but um, because YouTube police. But there's some more uh, highlights from this is from round two. That was the other knockdown, but uh, it's funny they didn't. They don't have a knockdown that I could show you. Again, it is on here. I can already see that it's on the video. Um, there's a he gets the Lima lands the leg kick, the leg kick uppercut, or he ex tr tries to do the leg kick up leg kick uppercut combo that he got in the that he finished uh, MVP with in the first fight. But MVP they asked him about that. And, like it was one of the things he was asked about immediately after. Um, in the cage and he said that um you know you know fool me what was he, he used the quote fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me or however that saying goes and i mean it, it made sense because he didn't he didn't get it you know he was literally it just by the skin of his nose the uppercut missed and he was able to get up but he was obviously expecting it and trained for it i mean once you got once fighters kind of cross hands once you know you got to do something different and um and it looks like this fight, what Lima did different was do more, do more takedowns. Um, let's watch this clip. This is from round three, and that's when he caught him. He he knocked him down. It was kind of like a, I mean, it was the right hand, but he also had his his left leg behind where where MVP would have stepped. Um, here's another takedown from round three. So just so, so you, I mean, you, you see most of these highlights. That's where most of the fight was. Um, and then they have the, uh, the stats. Uh, I mean, here, you, if you look at the total numbers, if you're going to go by that, so I saw somebody's, somebody tweeted, you don't go by stats for wins or something like that. Um, yeah, you kind of do. It's, it's one of the visual indicators that somebody's doing more to win a fight, even when it goes to the judges, but, um, MVP wound up the victor and, Where's the scores? Is the score on here? Let's scroll it down here. This is the score for it was a split decision victory. 29-28, 28-29, and 29-28. This last one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mention this guy's name. The judge, the last there was a judge, there's a judge that when I hear his name, I'm immediately concerned. Just like when Jaron Vallel, who actually refed a lot of fights at this event, um, when he's at an event. I'm immediately concerned for what's going to happen in the fight um, because they have reputations. And the the highlighted score, Doug Crosby, if you Google his name, and you'll see that like, there's a Bloody Elbow article that comes up. And I know as soon as you hear Bloody Elbow, well, they, they hate everything. They don't even like the sport. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I sort of agree with that, but whatever. They also do some do their due diligence on getting details and homework on on, on facts. Uh, they do more journalism if you're looking for that in half naked people fighting in the cage. That's where you should definitely go. And in the they have one where he admits an article from 2015 where he admits having bias against anyone from the Sarah Longo gym. And then he did uh, around that time he did an interview. Um, I think it was like the first year Chael Sonnen's podcast was up, and he talked about um. He talks about how uh, Chelsea is trying to get a legit answer out of him, just like you know, 
the training to become a judge or like what's the thing and and all he's doing is being a fucking pain in the ass and trolling or trying to be funny or whatever the hell you want to call he whatever he was trying to do and um you never got an answer but for me personally i got a good indicator that this guy likes to put salt on the wound twist the knife whatever you want to call it he likes to do he seems to like to do things to annoy people and what 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 better way to annoy fight fans than by by scoring for the guy to kind of make for another i mean the mvp array even said I w- i'd like to have a rematch because of the just the questionable judging that people you know the, he already got the feedback when he went to the post fight press conference you know he already started hearing like folks disagreed with the decision blah 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 mvp wants a convincing win against uh, the former welterweight beltor champion in uh, lima and i'm sure lima wants to rematch too um personally i agree that i think it should have been um if it was going to be a split decision because i get the knockdowns i'll give i'll give mvp that he, he definitely did way better than their first right first fight and um you know knocked him down but i just when i heard that name and that score follow i already knew i was like this is i i just again I'm, personal opinion don't fold mma news does this. i'm not a i'm not a journalist at best i'm a fucking blogger or whatever you want to call it for my writing but um i just feel like he did that to to fuck with us <laughs> that's just my opinion um so let's move on ufc vegas uh 38 uh interesting another interesting oh let me uh that's not the one i need to get that out of here um another interesting uh night of it was weird with with calls over the weekend before i get in add this one in um just uh there's you know we had the no contest from last night's ufc the kevin holland thing that head but we're going to get into that um but the other thing too uh that i found weird was uh even at the cffc event uh, i don't remember if it was a co-main event there was a uh, there was a fight that happened um where a, a guillotine choke was sunk in and it looked like it might have been stopped a little bit too late um then immediately after that, there was a guillotine. There was a, a fight that had the very next fight. Guillotine choke gets put on. Um, the names of the fighters are slipping my mind, and I, I feel like it was the co-main event of the CFFC 101. It's I, I'm looking for news off of that, and I'm sure we'll get it because MMA Junkie John <laughs> John Morgan of MMA Junkie. I just called him by his Twitter handle. Um, he does the commentary with CM Punk for those events, and he even said he was going to look into it because. There was a stoppage that happened uh, that was a guillotine that where the, the fighter didn't, didn't tap or anything. And he looked even after it, it happened, he was just like, you know, I I didn't tap out. He argued it. I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, if he argues against that. But then we had this weird thing uh, happen at UFC Vegas 38 with the headbutt. Um, I can't play this for you again. This is all video. ESPN MMA was the one that fucking got mad. We're promoting your shit, assholes. But anyway, we got the strike <laughs> against them. Um, the thing about the uh, that no contest, you know, it was a headbutt, and it's it's weird when you're training in in uh, combat sports, martial arts, striking, whatever. You know, when you're moving with purpose, those hits that you don't see are the ones that hurt the most. And that happens a lot, like a, like a head moving with purpose um, into someone else's head. I've I've seen it knock people's teeth out in my own training room uh, out, out here in New Jersey, where I train. I mean, it's it's accidents happen. It's one of the reasons. Like I'm super. I wear a mouthpiece when I'm on the mats for that reason. Um, if you saw Kevin Holland's like post like reaction to what happened, he even showed like like the the head butt messed up the inside of his lip. And a pretty cool reaction from him, by the way. I mean, he was pretty much kind of like, listen, um, giving credit to his kung fu roots about being defend yourself. As he said, as far as he was concerned, uh, his opponent knocked him out and choked him out at the same time. Um, so I, I just thought that was pretty, uh, pretty cool on his part. Uh, they ruled it a no contest, but uh, I, I definitely feel like, why isn't that on here? Anyway, they ruled it a no contest, um, which was fair in my opinion. 
But uh, I respect Kevin Holland's. I mean, you, so you just don't put it on here because you don't put it on here because there's a no contest. Doesn't make any sense to me. But whatever. I didn't write this shit. But um, I respect I respect where he's coming from, crediting his kung fu roots. But uh, I mean, a no contest. Somebody gets knocked out. Uh, I mean, it was you're moving with intention, but that wasn't the intention of your movement. I mean, it looked like they were going into a clinch. You know, by now, I think folks want to, you know, Kevin Holland's been working on his wrestling, but, you know, that short amount of time is not going to create that much of an improvement. But the way these guys train, you never know. It sucks. But they, uh, Kevin Holland said that they want, he, want, he wants to run it back. I wouldn't be surprised if they run that back because, uh, I mean, the UFC has done that before for odd fights with no contest. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if they run that back. Uh, Alex Hernandez with this. Crazy knockout uh, in the first round. That definitely made the highlights of the night for, for the UFC. I think there's some bonuses that went his way. He got a, a bonus. I forget who else. Um, I wish. Why do we have this on here twice? Uh, anyway, I wish. <laughs> Let me take this down. Fucking embarrassing. <laughs> I, I, I wish. Uh, I wish there were that fight. Um, I'm, I'm actually happy Tiago Santos pulled off the the win um, by unanimous decision because I was actually, you know, he he fought John Jones and then he had the two knee thing. He had he wrecked both of his knees in that fight. I remember seeing it happen. He threw one. He threw some power kick and without pivoting. And I remember just watching him. Like I, I feel like Rogan or someone commented on like he felt what something happened. And uh, I don't know if it was just the the allure of fighting John Jones and being at the title fight or whatever, but he finished that fight, and then he had he had to go get knee surgery and recover and all that stuff after that. But um, anyway, um, he didn't have a, a victorious road back. This fight, this fight was weird to have them facing each other. Um, but the fact that he won this, I mean. It's almost like uh, finally, you know, finally your knees are definitely good now. Johnny Walker's no slouch either. He's a goofy guy, but he's definitely he's another guy that packs a lot of power. So I, I was actually kind of happy. I I was I picked Johnny Walker to win because of it just looked like Tiago Santos was having a rough run and returning back to to action. Um, I'm trying to think what did I? There was a uh, oh yeah that Jamie Malarkey TKO was good was uh fun to watch a lot it was a definitely uh you know i'm a fan of cards with a lot of finishes so i'm glad that this card uh went by went that way the other thing i was happy about was that it started at 7 p.m um aaron brunstetter from tsn actually he put out an interesting tweet where he lists like all the next like i think it's for the remainder of the year i don't know i'm pretty sure it was the remainder of the year we're gonna get a lot of like early main cards with the exception of the pay-per-views, obviously, but um, every, like, the fight nights, I think he just listed the fight nights. We're going to get, like, 7 p.m. start times for the main cards, and as an East Coast fight fan, I'm pretty sure the folks, there's other, fo- I, I know folks across the pond prefer earlier cards, too, so I know it's only a few hours difference for them, but I hope that that makes a difference for them, too, but uh, I don't mind these early early Saturday cards. I mean, that was, I had to miss training for the CFFC thing because I did live results for that. That I minded. Plus, I had a doctor's appointment, but that's none of y'all's business. But um, yeah, it was. I definitely prefer an earlier fight card. I remember when I was in uh, Las Vegas for UFC 189. Um, that was when McGregor beat Chad Mendez, um, International Fight Week 2015, and the just the time difference there, sitting there for a card that finished. And to be out and still kind of have it be an early night that we could go partying, you know, drinking stuff. That was, that's that felt really nice. I think that's what made me want to move to the West Coast. Like, aside from them having better weather than god awful New Jersey. But uh, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, make sure you like, uh, thumbs up, bell notification, subscribe for future stuff coming up. Um, check out MMAnews.com for all the results and all the video stuff that I couldn't play. Um, I'll drop the links in the description for this at the YouTube channel. And if you're not following me on Twitter, where if you wanted to watch some regional stuff that I do for other outlets, make sure you give me a follow at Carbazel on Twitter. That is it for me. 
on this first Sunday of October. I'm going to try to Halloween it up every Sunday. I'll see if I can I can pick up some stuff at Spirit Halloween and try to be a little little Halloween spirit. It's like Christmas for me. But uh, I'm tapping out for this Sunday. I'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>